All right, brother. Well, we have your uh, your Boomer uh, 600 Deluxe here. Thought I'd make a little quick pre-video. Um, and uh, as we both knew, as you pointed out, dang phone. Sorry about that. As you pointed out, there's a blown tr transistor. Uh, went ahead and popped that out and double checked it. It is it is blown. And uh, luckily, luckily I have a brand new SRF3749 that I've been holding on to. <laughs> so you got lucky there. Won't have to order one from RF Parts. So uh, there. It should be pretty good, man. Um, of course, they're not the same lot there, but. Uh, 9605-9640. And the reason why they didn't go by a dot system, these are all usually maxed pretty closely together, kind of like Toshiba's are. So, so anyway, man, so we're just going to go through here, man. I might clean this up a bit for you. Uh, as I know, you did send me a little something there, man, uh, for appreciation, and I appreciate it. So I'm going to uh, put a little extra work in this for you, bud. Um, on the house <laughs> and uh, you know this this box has seen its better days somebody's uh, drilled uh, cut the side off right here for probably probably trying to get the box to fit in a tight spot I'm guessing and I uh, kind of wish that if they were going to do that they might as well just cut straight down here I've seen people do that in these so they can get into them easier but uh yeah, man, so we're going to do that, replace a couple more things, put some feedback circuits in here. I've already got made up here for you, and uh, and we'll test her out, man, and put her on the bench over there. So we'll be back. All righty. Let's see. One thing I forgot to mention is this. That's one of the things I noticed when I first looked in here, bud, is this, the power lead to this output transformer was not soldered down. It literally was pretty much just sitting right here on the hot strip. I forgot to point that out to you, bud. Um, I really wouldn't think, that wouldn't have really anything to do with this transistor blowing right here. It's not even in that section, but you never know, man. <laughs> I don't know. It might have been sitting on there just good enough to be getting a connection to be working at least, but I just kind of wanted to point that out to you, man. Um, so we're going to actually take these chokes off, man, put some bigger ones on for you. But, uh, yeah, that's the only thing I just uh, forgot to mention to you, but I seen after I press stop. So we'll be back. Alrighty, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, 396 on sideband, Mr. Breeze on AM, the same, uh, same name as a good buddy of mine, or aka Mr. Operator Jim. Here's your Boomer 600, bud. Okay. Right here you stated you want 500 watts at least. Okay. You mostly talk on sideband. You want to make sure it works good on sideband. And uh, right off the bat I could tell there was a blown transistor. Uh, requested modifications was that you pretty much just want it fixed. You didn't ask for anything extra even though I did give you some. I'll explain that in a minute. And, uh, you want a remote jack. And, uh, Mr. Jim sent old gatekeeper a present. <sighs> That's always appreciated, man. That's the blessing of being in this type of, in this type of business. Is you get to meet a lot of nice people. A whole lot of nice people. And I've been blessed enough to have some great customers come my way. And uh, sometimes they do like to 
throw some presents. You got to understand, a lot of people out here, you know, they own amps and they might have amps laying around that's broke and this and that and it don't mean nothing to them. But they know it means something to somebody like me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm the same way, man. I, I'm the same way to other people, you know. I got something I don't need. I don't mind passing it on, you know. And I know somebody else can get more use out of it than me. So anyway, brother, I basically took this repair to a new level. And basically did to it as if somebody would say, could you get in there and clean it up and make it look so spiffy and clean all the flux out of it? And can you do the little circuit change I've seen you do on these uh, Boomer slash Palomar 600s and and this and that? I think I did a video one time called uh, uh, Palomar 600 Metamorphosis, which I basically got in and changed some of the circuit. Cause it, these amps, you know, they're, they are what they are. They're an AB1, as they say, some people argue AB2, which you, normally these are only, I see the flash just turned off, and I got it plugged up over here, it's about dead, but anyway, which you, you normally only find those type of biasing and tube type amplifiers, but basically the input transformers are grounded, okay, it's kind of more of a hybrid type bias. The driver section is an AB, unregulated AB bias. The input transformer is not grounded, okay? It has no reference to ground on the input transformer. That choke is going directly to the B plus biasing. The output section, the input transformers are grounded, but they still have B plus bias going to the base of the transistors via these chokes, uh, VK100 chokes right here. One choke per transistor. Okay, that's carrying the bias to the base of each transistor. The reason why I think they probably done it like this was for more safety of the type of users they were going to have with these type amps. Grounding the transformers like that makes the this section not pull current like a true AB or B bias wood. That is a cigarette, by the way. Um, and that's just my guess with that. So the the four pill section, you know, there's a better chance of thermal runaway not happening and such stuff like that if not ran correctly. All right, man. We're going to test this thing out on my normal AM radios first, and then we'll hook her on up on the uh, 148 and let you see her working on sideband. So basically, this is what we took out of it, okay? Here's your old transistor that was blown. Luckily, I had a brand new one from RF Parts, which is the last one I have, actually. I think I got two, two or three more of these amps in repair. I hope none of them have blown pills or I will be ordering some more. <laughs> well, I think I got a buddy of mine that's got a couple of them. I might get to give him a ring. Well, anyway. So, basically, there's just a couple of things in these amps that I would have personally done different. And, um, the driver section is one of them. The... The output transformer has no leakage capacitor, has no capacitor from, from, from collector to ground. Um, does have a feedback circuit by factory, which is right here. Okay, I just put a new one on there to match the other. But the output has no feedbacks, okay, and this and that, this and that. I went ahead and went in here and done my little circuit change, uh, beefed up the power distribution on all the transformers as you see. Went from these, which of course is purely, you know, purely adequate with a short run and all, but it just makes me feel better to upgrade from this. Feeding the transformers to this, you know, it just makes me feel a lot better. And uh, as I do with all these amps, I thickened up the bus bar all the way to the driver. So you got a little, pretty much thin foil carrying DC current to this driver. 
We're dealing with DC, not AC at this point. AC runs on a skin effect. DC does not. <laughs> it basically, kind of look at it like it runs from the center out in a sense. Or you can look at it by running the outside in, but it's DC. So I always like to thicken that up and just thicken the solder up on all the pass, and that does make make it a lot more stiffer to where more amperage can can run, you know, or whatever. So anyway, uh, another thing I had to do was I had to uh, retune the input. Everything else was fine. I didn't have to tune the input of the four pill section in between. I did have to retune the input because there was about a watt worth of reflect, okay? And that is not good. I, I I will not let an amplifier leave out of here if it has a watt worth of reflect on the input. I can't. I just cannot do it. That's a lot of power being dissipated from the, the, the amplifier to the radio. And yeah, it, it probably won't hurt the radio and it, you know, and this, and the, but it's just too much for me. I'd I rather at least, I like to try to get it down for at least a quarter watt under if I can. Half a watt on some of these amps, you just can't help and understand. But uh, a one watt, I just, it's just too much for me. Uh, it's just a rule of thumb. But uh, they like to break the input up in the two tuning sections of these amps. And they use these trimmers right here to do that. And I usually like to mic them all in, you know, because so I can get there with a screwdriver and <laughs> you're messed up at that point, you know, unless you know what you're doing when it comes to tuning. So I went ahead and retuned that for you, bud, and uh, mic'd everything in, as you can see. I had to use two uh, silver dip micas to get that exact value. And uh, went ahead and mic'd it in right here as well for you, man, that trimmer that was right there. All right, what I did with the filter caps, these did not come factory. Somebody added these in here. What I went ahead and did was I replaced one filter cap that basically equals up to the value of these two. These are some older caps here. The older the cap is, the bigger it is. They got caps now this size right here. It's got the same capacitance of caps this big from the past. <laughs> Added feedback circuits, put new uh, caps right here. I stiffened up the caps on the output transformers as well, as well, and upgraded them from a 560, which comes factory. And here they are right here, these two, right there, two uh, 1000s. Okay, that seems to work real well on these amps. And uh, that's your blown resistor. I just replaced the other, the other. Uh, four resistors just to uh, buy some resistors just to match everything another thing i went ahead and do here's your bolt bolts that were holding on the so239s and of course they don't use stainless steel and a lot of these older type amps don't you know it just isn't cost effective for them to do that so i went ahead and replaced these are number for uh, these are number fours i went ahead and replaced them with number sixes that's what you see Right here now, number six, stainless steel. That's all I use with all my hardware. I don't use zinc or nothing. I might use zinc on bolts, uh, on power supplies, but that's about it. So I went ahead and upgraded that. I forgot to get that off for you. I'll get that off for you. Get some acetone on that. And I added you a new sticker back here. These do fade off over time, so I got you a new sticker back there for antenna and, and uh, transmit. Replace your resistor back here that was blown, balancing resistor. And I think that's it, brother. And as you can see, man, I Q tip the hell out, excuse me, the heck out. I've been trying to get better about cussing on the videos. <laughs> I Q tip the crap out of this. I Q tip the living crap out of this thing, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I cleaned it up good for you, man. Got all the flux out of there for you. And, uh, Basically, all this extra work I did is is free of charge, man. Uh, the only thing you're being charged for is what you ask for. And everything else extra is out of my appreciation for the gift you gave me, my friend. And I uh, highly appreciate that. The last thing is the remote. I went ahead and added the remote jack for you back here. And I have my little test remote hooked hook back up here that I always use for testing remotes, which is just simulating a switch, as you can see. Simulating a wired switch or, or a Y-mote. There's your remote plug right there. 
We'll go ahead and plug that back up. And there you go, man. So let's get this thing hooked up and show some output. And uh, by the way, make sure to leave this switched off, okay? I know somebody went ahead and went in here, and I see people doing this all the time, and it's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It is a bit of work taking this out and replacing these switches. I understand that. Um, your preamp switch is probably going to go out next. I'm just going to go ahead and let you know that, okay? It's working now, but it's it. you can tell it's, it's on its way. <laughs> That's common with these type amps. So, um, make sure to leave this power switch off. I noticed that the power switch actually is still working sometimes. But there, the, the switch is messed up internally and it's giving some extra. It's actually, it's weird, but it's having some sort of diode effect. There, there's just something going on in that switch. It's causing reflect if you turn it on. Do not turn that switch on. Make sure it's off, okay? Just use this switch and whoever added to it. Okay. All right, man. Let's get this thing fired up and see what she's doing. All right. We got everything hooked up. Go ahead and get this bad A lighter right out of here. <laughs> and light up my celebration, Sig. <laughs> I still can't get over this. My buddy Chris sent this to me and said, Hey man, use this use this in your next celebrations to light up. <laughs> I don't think I think I probably had this lighter for a long time. I think the uh, electronic lighter part of it is gonna go out before the fluid runs out. <laughs> don't even fit on camera things so big. Good god the money. Look at the size difference there. <laughs> All right, buddy. Four watts in from the radio. That's four watts RMS. Here's something else I want to explain to a couple people before I do this. Have any of y'all ever noticed on these amplifiers, this is a Boomer Deluxe 600, Palomar 600, Palomar 550. They're all identical. Identical. Have you ever noticed on the front of them, they'll say high drive amplifier? Have anybody ever noticed that? But it's a one drive and four. How is it a high drive amplifier, right? I'll explain the theory behind that. At first, I thought maybe the driver circuit was able to be turned off with a switch when you went to lower or medium, but that's not the case. It's their input padding, man. They got input padding in this thing like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Some of them have more than others. Some of them have an extra stage of input padding. We're basically looking at one, two, three stages pretty much of input padding. I drew a circuit of it one time when I was learning these amplifiers and it's just crazy. Just using series and series, series parallel of input padding and uh so that's what they're getting at with that is you can drive it harder because of the input padding or whatever and uh yeah if you put this thing on low yeah, i guess it's somewhat of a high drive but i would call it medium drive okay but anyway let's get on with the show four watts rms drive we'll get it on that supply over there which uh I don't know if it'll hold it or not. It did turn off when I hooked the hot radio up, but we'll just roll on that first, and then we'll hook it up to the unregulated and give it give it what it really wants current-wise. 1,000 watt, watt slug. This is your RMS. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we've got about 160, 170 RMS. I'm going to have to unplug this so I can show you the input reflect okay like i said it had a watt worth of input reflect before I, uh before i tuned it tuned the input of it here's the input reflect now oh yeah oh yeah 100 times better all right here's your peak just on four watts drive okay like i said mind you it's got padding <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
right there almost 400 watts oh and you're gonna see this increase of course once we put it on some better current capability a little bit uh maybe a little bit higher voltage or whatever but that's just how these amps are there i have yet to see one that's really a powerhouse um if i built this amp with these exact transistors it probably would do a little bit more probably um and if anybody else would i just have not yet to see one that's a powerhouse usually they do right there about 200 bird sometimes a little more I've, i have got one up to 300 before but not much past that um and i think the most pp i got out of one was 700 and uh, I think it had 454s in it instead of these. They vary a lot. Unlike some other amps out there that are real close together, they vary a lot from amp to amp. And that's just something I've noticed with my experience. Now, what the amp was doing before, at, when I replaced the transistor, I tested it out then. Um, I was only getting about 100 RMS out of it, which is terrible. And uh, it was only doing about 300 peak. When I had, went ahead and did all the changes that you see, it gained what you see now. So it did have a gain from those changes, which is good. I like to see a gain from changes and no gain. <laughs> all right, man. We'll be back. We're going to hook this thing up on a little bit better supply. And we're going to hook the hot radio into it. And then after that, we're going to take it up on sideband. All righty, I'm back. And you know what, man? I absolutely forgot, which I do a lot. I didn't even show you the remote function of of it working. I was using the front of the air, so I, sorry about that. We got it off. Okay, here's the remote function right here. On, off, on, off, on. There you go. So we'll just use the remote function now. And uh, one more thing I will tell you, man. It's always a good idea to add a fan to these amps, man, because they do get warm. They do get warm. All right, we're on the medium tap, and you will see here pretty quickly. And this right here is to prove to you about current. Using that switcher over there in this. This is about to operate on lower voltage than what we were just running. We were running 14.5 over there. But you're going to notice we're going to get more RMS, more output but still on a lower voltage. How is that possible? Because that switcher right there, even though the voltage is staying regulated, the current is can, can get smaller and smaller. Switchers are a little different. And there, you know, this right here will prove it right here. All right. We're on 18.6 volts float. Here's your RMS, 1,000 watts. Eight watts drive in. Go. Ooh, about 220 RMS. Don't look at the drop. Ooh, 14, not 3 volts. It will go to 14.1 too. See? There you go. Gained almost 40 watts, 50 watts RMS, which is a good gain with less voltage. How is it possible? We're getting more current now than what we were getting with the switcher. I mainly use that switcher for two pills and under. All right. Here's your peak. Ooh, there's your 500 watts you're wanting. All right, I'm just going to flip over here and we're going to give it a little bit more current since it is dropping pretty good. Okay. Here's RMS again. Ooh, Ooh, about 250, which is good for these amps. Peak might not be much of an increase, but ooh, about 580. About 580. And voltage drop on that is probably not much. Ooh, about 16 volts, which I wouldn't run there. I would not run it there. <clears throat> All right, bud. So uh, we were able to show you 500 watts, which you were wanting, um, which you'll be able to achieve that a lot easier on sideband. 
uh, you know, running 14.5 volts or so. And um, you wouldn't have to drive it like I was just showing just then. And now let's hook up the uh, 148, which I don't get to do a lot. <laughs> and we'll uh, go ahead and get done with this long video. Thanks for uh, hanging in here with me. 21 minutes. Good God the money. I went to press record to show the uh, 148 and I uh, quickly figured out that I had run out of space. I only had about 30 seconds left. <laughs> well, about 25 seconds to be exact. And uh, I just decided to go ahead and go to bed. It was pretty dang late. I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to get about two or three hours of sleep. I probably got about two and a half. So here we go. So, all right, next morning. I don't know if I've ever had a video I've split up like that in two days, but uh, I had to get in the bed, man. And I knew it was going to probably take me about 30, 45 minutes just to clear up space, man. It gets crazy when you're trying to find space using these dang smartphones. you got to move stuff here and there and back stuff up just to get enough space or whatever. I've got to get me a bigger SD card. So, anyway, we're on the 148. This 148 doesn't have a comp tune or anything like that <clears throat> it's actually uh built for hi-fi so it's it's you know it's not a sh real strong radio i just want to let you let you see that it's uh the side bend delay is working just fine and all that good stuff so you want to make sure it's working fine on side band okay so i'll let you just hear the delay here i'm keying the mic now oh yeah unkey Oh, 1883. Got down, got down, got down. Unkey. Alrighty, so the delay's working just fine. Oh, yeah. Close to about 480 watts. Okay. So, uh. Hello, key, 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 unkey, unkey. There you go. I tell you what, man, I think this is going to be about a four or five video part. I just got a phone call just in and knocked me off. But anyway, I think that's good enough, man. We uh, let you see that she's working on sideband just fine. The delay's working fine, which is good to good to check because I know some of these boxes, uh, I've, I've found the delay cap back here actually blown, but you can't even tell it because there's, there's no, no trace of it, so. So that's good good to check that out, man. So here you go, man. Uh let me get everything unplugged here. I was gonna show you one more thing. On your power wires here, man, these were crimped on here and they were kind of moving, it seemed like. I went ahead and soldered them up, uh stiffen that up for you there, and put some more heat shrink on there so you can you know, I, you already had heat shrink on there to see which is positive and negative and everything. Um, uh, let's see. I, like I said, I don't know. I, I tried to smooth this out a bit for you with my Dremel. There were some kind of parts there. If you ran your hand across it real hard, you'd probably get cut. And uh, I, I tried to as good as I could without trying to scratch, you know, tr scratching the side of the case here. I've never seen anybody do this before, but. They left that side on and cut that side off. Like I said, I guess they were trying to just fit it in between something. And uh, like I said, man, with these amps right here, I mean, yes, the, they, they do got adequate heat sink. You know, the whole case is the heat sink pretty much, but they still get very hot. I, I don't really know why that is, but they just do. I had one one time, man, that thing gets so hot you can cook an egg on it. It still keep rocking and rolling. So it's always good, man. Throw you a throw you a hundred twenty millimeter fan. Put some screws in it. Screws are usually wedge in between the uh, fins here, and a lot of times you can take like a case uh, outer uh, the the, the uh, plastic um, of, of like a, let's see an eight x uh, RG eight x or like an eight gauge wire, ten gauge wire, something like that. If you don't want to cut, you know, scratch up the heat sink and put it in the screw. And the screws are usually wedge yourself just perfectly. If you ever wonder how people put fans on there so easily, then you can just run your wires in the back, drill you a little hole if you want to. And, and uh, if you want to, you can just hook them up on the switch right there. 
or you could hook it up to the relay right here and put the positive where the strike diode is uh, you can't really see it down there but the diode let me turn that around <laughs> See that diode, see the stripe part? The stripe always points towards the positive part of the relay. Okay, that's an easy way to remember that. These are here for protection for the diode. Uh, help from any uh, uh, transient um, electrostatic or anything like that. Get it out of the coil. Help keep that relay rolling for years and years. So you can put your positive there you negative to the board right here and it'll come on when the amp comes on and uh or you could get crazy and which i had one done like this before and put your two 120s on there and that bad boy never get hot man all right man we got our sewed up for you man we'll get the bottom on here and get this thing out to you bud i highly appreciate you man god bless you and everybody else Give a shout out to uh, Mr. Real Deal out there. Give a shout out to Mr. O73. Give a shout out to Mr. Chris. You know who you are, big guy. And, uh, uh -oh, I'm going to get myself in trouble here. Give a shout out to, I want to say it's Mr. I know it's Mr. Breeze. I was going to use your first name. <laughs> I can't get the pages turned here. Uh, yeah, Mr. Operator Jim. There you go. On to the next. Bye-bye-bye.